6.30 and a quorum being present, I call this meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is a public hearing, a request for a determination of applicability. This is being continued. Um, could I have a motion to uh, continue to the next meeting? Agenda item A, public hearing, request for a determination of applicability, Pan Am Railways, Inc., Pan Am Railways, Railways right away, one railroad street, assessor's map, 11 lot one. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to say that that's a uh, continuance because of uh, the legal <coughs> notice uh, wasn't published in a time. All right. So. <coughs> I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair aye. votes aye as well. All right, agenda item B, uh, public hearing. Request for determination of applicability, Christian Torella, 495 Chandler Street, Assessor's Map 60, Lot 163. Could you fill us in on the details yep. of this? Um, so uh, just to update you from the last time we spoke back I think in February um, I had um, an, an update to the uh, existing conditions um, of my plot plan so essentially had the uh, wetland lines re-delineated by uh, uh, Goddard Consulting it's Scott Goddard and Andrew uh, Thibault and then had a uh, real map info a surveyor and uh, Todd Chapin come back in and redraw the existing plans. So first page is the new plans. Um, the second page, I just did like an update of pretty much the area where I was gonna look to clear out for a yard. And um, we're gonna have sedimentation controls along the outside, which I actually already talked to a company um, they called Environmental Contracting Company. They're gonna use a nine inch uh, compost sock um, on the outer edge, right on that second page where I put the uh, foot markers. And the third page is just a reference uh, to the old plans. Um, really, just I was looking at the plans earlier, and one of the major differences, I think Joe saw it as well, is probably closer to where the um, area uh, being cleared out. I think in the first page, you can see it. It's uh, GC1, GC6 on my side, uh, bumped out a little bit. It looks like the other lines were actually pretty uh, standard they may have came, come out a little bit, but I think that was like the major difference there So he drew redrew the 25 foot 50 foot 100 foot lines and then came back out and restaked them so you can see like the um, The blue flags out there and the orange um, 25 foot buffers along with the uh, um, Stake lines for the plot And again, it's a very similar plan, um, clearing it out for a yard. Uh, fence most likely on the outer edge of that. That's why on the second page I sort of outlined that, but it would be within that marker. So depending, I, I still have the sedimentation controls on that outer edge, but mm. depending on that, it would be on the inside of that. Uh, Joe, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, so sorry, the second page, the yellow shaded is what you're currently proposing for clearing? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's a, that's a, well, that's a good question. So like, that would be like, if I were to build a fence, that's actually where it's going to be. It's not going oh. any further back. Okay. Um, but I guess the other part, well, that's the first part of the question. Second part would be like, in terms of like future stuff behind that, um, is that sort of like a reproposal or how, how does that work, um, within between the 25 and the 100 foot zones or the 25 foot zone and the edge of my plot plan? So I know we talked about um, obviously that the yellow shaded area, but if I were to ever like go further back, is that something I have to repropose, or how does that work? Um, I would I would assume that if you're, if it's not being proposed currently, then it would be okay. another proposal. Okay. Um, but yeah, the yellow the yellow area um, on the third page, I had like a little bit more on like behind the fence. Yeah. But it's really, I, I looked back there, I don't 
actually think I really need it, but it's essentially this yellow area. I'm just really concerned about okay. throwing a fence back there. Okay, so I guess the reason for that question was uh, when the permit is drafted, assuming the commission approves of it, it just needs to reference like what exactly is being approved. Okay. So um, if you're proposing clearing behind the fence or just within where the fence in area, uh, mm -hmm. so I guess just committing to whatever you'd like in, in yeah. terms of as long as the commission is on board. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, my priority as long as I'm more than happy with just that yelled area, but if I could go further back and stay as long as I don't touch that 25 foot buffer zone, um, I would propose that. If that's an issue, then I can work with you guys. Definitely up to you. But the yellow area would be the area that I am more or less proposing as a definite. Okay. Um, I guess before the commission comments, I would say um, so if the commission is to issue a negative determination, uh, the following conditions are suggested. Install and maintain sediment controls, which shall include of a properly entrenched silt fence and or stake straw wattles around the area of construction as to prevent the deposition of sediment from construction activities into nearby wetland resource areas. You mentioned the nine inch compost filter tubes, that's, that's fine. Yep. Uh, sediment control shall remain in place until all areas of disturbed slash loose soil and other erodible materials have been stabilized at the site. Uh, number two, prior to any construction activity commencing, the following must be completed. So one, uh, the sediment control shall be installed by the applicant or an agent of the applicant, mm -hmm. and uh, the conservation agent shall inspect and approve the installed sediment controls. Yep. Um, number three, and I, I'm not sure if you alluded to this already, but the sediment control shall be placed along the 25 foot no disturb zone boundary. So that way it's like a physical barrier when someone goes to clear the the vegetation they can they actually have like a stopping point mm -hmm. um, does do you need it so i guess i guess my question is do you need it on like the border of my property as well because that's the area i'm clearing out because it's te technically still in the zone or do you just need it along the 25 foot it's it's supposed to go on down gradient portions of wherever they're wherever you're having construction mm -hmm. so so as to prevent sediment yeah. from depositing into well. Like I was gonna put it on the back, like on that back fence, it would be technically yeah. behind it. Right, yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, but I'm, so is it okay? So I was gonna do it along that entire edge though. Is that okay or is it, are you saying I don't need it on that 70 foot line and that 35 foot line? So on the second page, you'll see like 70 foot line. I measured it out. So where that yellow area is, assuming there's a, um, the fence would be longer, but um, that 70 foot line that's um, within that buffer yeah. zone, does that need to also have, I, so it's almost yeah, like I, a I C shape? Yeah, so it would just be a C shape. It doesn't necessarily yeah. have to go in an entirely 70 feet. Okay. Um, but as long as that entire area is covered. Yeah, I'm only asking because he, he's yeah. asking for like footage and stuff, so I have to give him like a. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I think, I mean, I think it covers it anyway. I think I have to do like a minimum of uh, 270, and this came out to like 230 something, so. Okay. Um, so I, I have to give him like length and stuff when he does it. So, uh, so if that's the case, then, then yes. Okay. Then that's fine. Entirely. Yeah. So you don't really need anything on that 35 foot, that back area? That's not going towards the wetland. That's the erosion right, control, right? right? The 35, 125, 70. That's the sediment control, erosion control. Yeah, that so. Like oh, a 35 okay. doesn't matter at all. Okay. Got and it. then like that 125, you really just need to follow that 25 foot buffer line. So if you can get away with less, you don't have to do, if unless 270 is the minimum, but that 35 doesn't necessarily matter. I'm not sure what the minimum is, but. So just so I'm clear, um, when you said on that back line, so would that come down like half of that 125? Yeah, so if you look at the 25 foot wetland buffer on yep. the first page, that's the line that you really need to follow going up. That's what we're protecting the wetlands itself. So okay. going on that back in that 35 and most of that 125 really doesn't help protect the wetlands. 
Okay. So that 35, I don't have to worry about the the 70. So then the 70, I wouldn't have to either. I would talk. Joe can weigh in this, but if you could probably go five, ten feet, because you don't want to go on someone else's property. Like I just didn't know if it had to be like along the outer edge of like the yeah. fence or something. If there's a fence in the area, because technically that's all in the wetlands, right? It's in that buffer zone, or if it just has to be on that backside. It's protecting the wetlands yeah, yeah. is the goal. So you really don't need to go up all 70 mm -hmm. unless you feel differently, Joe. I think if you went up. 10, 15 feet, you would probably be protecting the wetlands pretty well. Sure. Okay, so essentially that back side. Okay. Uh, so to address like future clearing, do we want that to be a separate filing or? I, mean, I was gonna suggest if you do this pink, you can just modify how you do your erosion control and just follow the 25. Or the 25 well, that's, yeah, that's what I'm trying and to do. And then figure. if you do the pink section, you can do that later, and you're probably still saving on the amount of erosion control you're doing. Yeah. The footage. Okay. So I would just follow that 25 foot a little bit further down on that 125 oh, section. Oh, okay. Yeah. Follow that 25 foot buffer. Then if you do extra clearing, I would approve it for the pink just in case this fence line shifts slightly. Okay. Yeah. Then you don't have to worry about coming back and doing a modification order. So, yeah. So I'd like to propose that pink then okay. on the third right. page. All right. All right. And then just. Instead and of fall having it all the way 25 down. go across, just have it fall at 25 like, yeah. to Got the it. edge of that pink, or a little bit past that pink. Okay. That, you just that you works. Want. Then you don't have to worry if you do clear any extra. Yeah. Okay. Great. I'd like to propose that. <laughs> any other conditions? Nope. All right. Um, anybody on I'm the good. Commission. <laughs> um, all right. So this is a public hearing. Um, so if there's anybody who would like to ask any questions or make any comments, now is the time to do so. I ask you go up to the podium and introduce yourself. Not seeing anybody doing that, could I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Could I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. Um, and could I have a motion for a negative determination of applicability for Christian Torella, 495 uh, Chandler Street, Assessor's Map 60, Lot 163, as discussed at this meeting? I like that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And just to be clear, negative determination is what you want it to yes. happen. Yep. Thank you. All right. Agenda item C, public hearing, notice of intent. Eric Tibbetts, 230 Terramore Drive, assessor's map 32, lot 96, DP file number 305-1178. Could you please introduce yourself for the record? Yes, hi, my name is Claudia, Claudia Shimchak, and I'm here on behalf of my fiance, Eric Tibbetts. He's um, traveling for work this week. Um, and what are you proposing to do? Yeah, so uh, we are planning to build a pool in our backyard, but it was brought to our attention that it's within 100 feet from wetlands. Uh, so we would like to ask the town's permission to, to build the pool. All right. Um, Joe, do you have any questions or comments about this one? <coughs> um, so the pool is located uh, between 50 and 100 feet away from uh, nearby wetland, it's an in-ground pool. Um, there's a stormwater ditch that goes behind the fence um, and into a stormwater basin, and that's being constructed as part of the subdivision, so I would assume it's not jurisdictional. Um, but anyways, that, that stormwater ditch would act as kind of like the <coughs> sediment controls, really. Mm -hmm. um, although it might be helpful to still include sediment controls just to protect the stormwater basins, I suppose, but um, I guess I'll leave that for the commission. Um, other than that, uh, if the commission were to issue an order of conditions for this project, the following conditions are suggested. suggested um, standard conditions number one through four and number nine through 19 uh, with the note that number 12 uh, may not be necessary because that requires an as-built. Um, I'm not sure, just because it's it's within their backyard, this wetlands are like beyond a stormwater ditch, 
I think the certificate of compliance process, just me doing a site visit to just visually observe the pool mm -hmm. might be sufficient. I'm not sure the as bill would actually uh, give the commission any information that wouldn't already be determined through a site visit. All right. But it's up to the commission. And, yeah. Any questions or comments from commission yeah, I, members? I guess my only condition is when they when they pump the pool down to winterize it, when we back flush it, um, got to have something there that they're going to dump it on their own property, mm -hmm. not into that stormwater basin. That's okay. got to be some sort of condition that we're agreed to without okay. without any variance. Yeah, you can't, you know, pour the water into the Makes wetlands. Sense. You can't put can't it, dump into it into that, the street or that the storm basin. basin. Yeah. Right. Because you pump that thing down, if it's a normal size pool, you you have probably six, seven thousand gallons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got to put it on your own property, your okay. own backyard. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, it's there, there doesn't seem like it's a gigantic property or, or anything, Easy. but it's just directing the water into the existing lawn, essentially. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so pump water into your own property not towards the correct well, when when mm -hmm. pool maintenance is required that the water needs to be discharged into their own backyard not to the stormwater basin yeah. okay so i guess I, just to be clear um i guess isn't it all pitched to go to the basin i'd imagine yeah the, the <laughs> well i mean if if you discharge it in a in an upland area at least it has time to do that get some information. yeah what we're trying to prevent is the hose into the yeah. into the storm oh, yeah. water mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know let the let nature filter it yes yeah joe does this pool impact the stormwater basin is it a detention basin essentially and was that a previous condition on this house being built to put this or the whole sub area i'm not sure if this was a, part of a larger project <clears throat> to, this is like part of the stormwater control that was done for that project and does this impede that, adding this pool? Uh, not to my knowledge. Um, not to my knowledge was there conditions that would prohibit someone from. So I'd say someone's just not building this on their own, if it, unless it's like a natural. Is it? Is this a natural like detention basin, or oh, was this built as part of this project? Oh yeah, so the basin I believe was built as part of the project. Does this impede that or hinder its performance at all? Not to my knowledge. Okay, that's all I need here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I guess I would add that um, for conditions to just the general what I read off earlier. Install and maintain sediment controls which shall include of a properly entrenched silt fence and or stake straw waddles around the area of construction as to prevent the deposition of sediment from construction activities into nearby wetland resource areas. Sediment control shall remain in place until all areas of disturbed slash loose soil and other erodible materials have been stabilized at the site. And number two, prior to any construction activity commencing, the following must be completed. Uh, sediment control shall be installed by the applicant or an agent of the applicant, and the conservation agent shall inspect and approve of the installed sediment controls. Um, so the sediment controls would just be some sort of device around like where the digging is going to occur just to make sure that that sediment doesn't deposit into the basin or the wetlands. Okay. So. Any other questions or comments from the commission? I'm good. good. All right. So this just to be the, the as built, is that being waived? So it's removed standard condition number 12, which requires an as built or? I don't think so. I don't think we need an as built. It's not going to move. So, yes, re remove that? Yes, remove it. <laughs> All right. This is a public hearing. Um, if there's anybody who would like to make a comment or ask a question, now is the time to do so. Not seeing anybody uh, get up, could I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Could I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. And could I have a motion to approve the notice of intent, Eric Tibbetts, 230 Terramore Drive, Assessor's Map 32, Lot 96, DP file number 305-1178, as discussed at this meeting. I'll make that motion. Um, could I have a second, please? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Agenda item D, public hearing. Request for determination of applicability. Jeffrey Blute, 79 Chandler Street, Assessor's Map 76, Lots 12, 13, and 3. And I believe Steve is recusing yes. himself. I, could you please introduce yourself for the record? I'm Jeffrey Blute. I'm the president of Tuxby Rod and Gun. And what are you planning on doing today? Uh, routine maintenance to a, a gravel road that runs to the back of a property. Um, any comments or um, questions from the commission? <coughs> I'm not seeing anybody. Joe, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, my comments are that this was uh, <coughs> derived from an enforcement order from this routine maintenance. Uh, basically, and please confirm that uh, the maintenance is just to apply additional gravel to the gravel road that deteriorates over time slightly Be yeah well because of the beaver problem that we had there too yeah. so yeah um, so this had previously come to the commission's attention because of the enforcement order uh, they had since uh, advised to file the RDA, RDA and establish the seven <coughs> patrols uh, since the enforcement order was issued the seven patrols have been established along the roadway um, so if the commission is to issue a negative determination, uh, the following conditions are suggested. One, install and maintain sediment controls, which shall uh, include a properly entrenched silt fence and or stake straw waddles, which we have. Uh, around the area of construction as to prevent the deposition of sediment from construction activities into nearby wetland resource areas. Sediment controls shall remain in place until all areas of disturbed slash loose soil and other erodible materials have been stabilized at the site. And number two, I. I um, I would suggest that the condition for the permit would be uh, the maintenance of the road is limited to the, the periodic uh, application of gravel within the existing footprint of the road and within the existing height of the road. So basically just ensuring that you're not you know, going crazy about expanding the road. Right? No, we're, we're, um, because of the water, it's just potholes. We are first. If we don't have to add any extra gravel, we're not going to. We, uh, we've done it with rakes on the back of a, of a tractor before and scraped. And if we can do it with that, we'll do it. Uh, the last thing I want to do is add more. If I don't have to, I won't. We appreciate that. <coughs> um, anything else? Any other questions from <coughs> commission members? This is a public hearing. Um, if there's anybody from the public who would like to Get up and ask a question. Now is the time to do so. Not seeing anybody. Uh, could I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Um, could I have a second, please? Second. All those in favor? <clears throat> aye. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. And could I have a motion for a negative determination of applicability for Jeffrey Blute, 79 Chandler Street, Assessor's Map 76, Lots 12, 13, and 3, as discussed at this meeting? Is it 33 or 13? 33. <clears throat> I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Well, I said aye. Oh, aye. <laughs> uh, chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> All right. Agenda item E, request for a certificate of compliance, Salvi Quoto, SNC Realty Investment Co. LLC, 879 Main Street, Assessor's Map 84, Lot 18, DP file number 305-371. Is that correct? 371? I believe so. All right. Cool. That's, uh, I think, the oldest. DP file number I've seen. Could you please <laughs> introduce yourself for the record? Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. My name is Isaac Machado, and I represent SNC Realty Investment. Um, uh, here tonight, uh, seeking a certificate of compliance for the 1989 order of conditions. My client purchased a property in 2006, and at that time, the order was there. Um, he hasn't done any work to the property in the last, thir uh, I guess it's been 13 years now. We're in the process of trying to. Um, uh, sell it. Um, 
uh, we have submitted a, uh, the application uh, by Smith, uh, Weston and Sampson um, with the uh, as builds and the written statement by the professional engineer. So we're asking tonight um, that we're seeking a certificate of compliance for that 1989 order. All right, any um, uh, comments or questions from the commission? Give you guys a second. In the meantime, Joe, do you have any questions or comments? <coughs> Uh, my comments are that um, from a regular, regulatory standpoint, it seems like all the requirements have been satisfied. They've provided an as-built um, stamp by a professional engineer or surveyor. They provided a letter of substantial compliance that notes uh, any deviations. Uh, from the information that can be gathered based off available evidence, it just seems like this order was for the construction of a building. and. Uh, demolition of a few other structures within the property. Um, I did a site visit um, uh, with a representative and it seemed like <coughs> that part of the project was completed. Uh, I mean, going back to 1989, so seems like it was done. So to, to the best of my knowledge, it's uh, it would be a complete certificate of compliance if mm -hmm. the commission was in agreement. That's it. Any questions or comments? I'm not hearing any. That seems pretty straightforward. Um, it's good to see this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it was a gold cart at track at one point, yeah. and <laughs> I unfortunately yeah. didn't get to use it. I'm not from this area. <laughs> It'd be a little dangerous to to use it in its current state. Um, all right. If that's the case, could I have a motion to approve the Certificate of Compliance for Salvi Quoto, SNC <coughs> Realty Investment Co. LLC, 1879 Main Street, Assessors Map 84, Lot 18, DEP File Number 305-371. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Did you say complete? Complete CFC? Or did you say CFC certificate? I said approve the certificate of compliance. That's fine. I think Dennis used to use that golf, that uh, go kart. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Agenda item F request to extend an order of conditions. Peter Ellison of the Engineering Corp. Um, Lawrence, Massachusetts, 3, 3R, and 4, Executive Place, Andover, Massachusetts, and address portions of project extended to Tewksbury Assessor's Map 115, lots 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, DP file number 305-1093. Could you please introduce yourself for the record? Hello, my name is uh, Brad Mustaine with TEC. I'm here in place of uh, Peter Allison. What is it that you would like to do today? Uh, extend the order conditions out there for the Burt Road site. Mm -hmm. As you might imagine, things haven't progressed quickly since April 2020. <laughs> All right. Um, any questions or comments from the commission? Is three years <coughs> typical, Joe, or is that a long time? I don't know if it's typical, like, statistically. I'm not talking so. Is it okay to do a three year? Oh, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, that's the max you can do. The max, okay. Yeah. And we just had a. We just did a two year. Was it two or two or three? It was last. three, but then it was one that was required. I'm, I'm, I'm fine good with, with, I'm good with the three. three year extension. Right. You know, as you alluded to when this was approved, things were a little <laughs> different. Um, so. so I did just want to provide further context so the commission is fully enlightened. Um, so yeah, so this uh, order was issued during the state of emergency, which for some reason doesn't get the benefit of the COVID permit tolling. So it's typical, it's like three year expiration date. Um, technically the regulations say that you have to request an extension 30 days prior to uh, the expiration date, um, which wasn't done, 
but it's either approve of the extension or you know if you, if you don't do the extension and it's expired that would imply a new file. I mean it, it hasn't expired Correct. At, at the moment. No, not until the 23rd. Um, yeah I mean I guess in the future please warn us. Absolutely. But while you are still within the um, time limits as long as you're not outside of the time limits, uh, um, I'm comfortable uh, granting it. Is there any reason why you need three years of substan substantial completion, spring 24? Exact reason, no. It's, that's probably so the most Substantial reason. spring finals, probably summer 24. So why do you need two and a half years after that? Well, right now we're dealing with Engrid and a permit issue, so that could take three years. <laughs> Um, uh, this is the timeline you gave us. That's why I'm asking. Truthfully, I don't know. I'm in place with Peter today. Um, <laughs> construction hasn't started out there. What do we have as substantial completion done by? The uh, final punch of slice of items being complete <coughs> in spring 24. Yeah, there's been delays on the site that spring 24 it could be a bit of a stretch at, at this point, especially for a permit closeout. All right, so this is more of a preventive strike. Extend it three years and hope it's done. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Okay. Hmm. I would recommend two, just based on two. the timeline that was given to us. I'm not sure why we need three. What is uh, the, what did you say the timeline it's is? It's the last sentence of the second big paragraph, uh, first page. I mean, I'm comfortable with one, two, three. Um, I mean, I, I get your point. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how much that's going to hold your feet to the flames uh, to get it done. Uh, well, I certainly hope it's off my desk in two years. Then are, are you comfortable with two? Uh, if everybody else on the commission is comfortable with two? I'm good with two or three because things are just yeah. not the way they used to be. Yeah. Yeah, lead times on construction items. I'm, I don't want to guarantee to, but. I mean, Joe, uh, you, you can only continue something <clears throat> at a maximum of six years. So it's the, com I believe, I would have to double check the exact language, but I believe it allows the commission to exercise that if they want. Mm -hmm. So it can't be six years past the original expiration date or date of issuance. I have to check. Uh, yeah, and honestly, if you give us two, and the worst case scenario is I got to come back you here come in back. two years, yeah, that's I can give you a better I, I like, reason. I like <laughs> Kevin's yeah. thing of go, let's go right. two, and worst thing, we, we look at you yeah. in two years from now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You gave us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, so could I have a motion to extend an order of conditions for Pete Ellison of the Engineering Corps, uh, Lawrence, Massachusetts, 3, 3R, and 4, Executive Place, Andover, Massachusetts, address portions of project extended to Tewksbury Assessor's Map, um, 115, lots 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, DB file number 305-1093, to, uh, for two years. I'll make that motion. Could I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you very much. Appreciate this time. All right. Agenda item G, violation notice, Fabio Lima and Isabella Andreza, 237 River Road, assisted map 27, lot 19. Hello. And could you fill us in on the details of where you stand currently? Or could you actually introduce yourself first? <laughs> I My appreciate name is Lima. Um, So I cleaned 90% all of the stuff that was there in the tree mm -hmm. trunks, tree branches. I pushed as far as I could at the field, as you see me. I hope I'm moving the 
in the right path. Mm -hmm. um, Joe, do you have any questions or comments? Joe, over. Um, yeah, so I provided photos from a recent site visit within the last few weeks. Um, the toe of the slope where all the stumps and stuff had originally been has been cleaned up uh, substantially. The, the fill area is pushed back to approximately 25 feet or greater. Um, so I think it's just about, I mean, there's still some fill that remains as part of like the leveling off of the backyard. Um, so I would think if uh, the commission is, I mean, you want to leave it how it is currently, correct? Yeah. So, uh, it's either, I mean, at this point, since it's been going on for so long, I think just potentially the commission considering filing an RDA just to get the permit and then like as it is currently um, to accept it as is, but just filing the RDA as would any mm -hmm. other applicant would be required of them and then call it a day. All right, so are, are you comfortable with, you, you'd be keeping your property as, essentially as is right now um, and filling out an RDA, but that would be a pretty okay. quick process because okay, no we already know what's going on. Okay. Any questions or comments from Good. the commission? I have done. Um, all right, so this is, it's a violation notice, so um, we're not actually going to vote on anything, but it's with the understanding that um, you'll uh, file an um, RDA um, and Joe, can you yeah. fill in any details? Right, he can reach there? out to Joe and yeah. work through the Thank details. I will because uh, I understood half of what's going on. I know I gotta fill up something. It's you a call, it's call Joe. You just have right. to obtain a permit. Okay. Because um, that would be required of anyone else. No, no problem. Um, so you just tell me what to do and I'll if, do it. If, yeah, you send your email. And if you send me an email, my wife is American, it will be much easier for her to understand most of it. Okay. I appreciate you coming and, and you know, having this dialogue with no, us. No, no problem. She would be here, but she's a nurse. She works at Lo, uh, Lawrence General. Mm -hmm. And now, for some reason, they, they change her shit from 3 to 11. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, in, um, when you fill out the RDA, you can always continue, um, you know, ask to be continued to the next meeting if something like that happens again. Um, okay. You know, if it's crucial that she's here. When, when he sends me the email, I'll, I'll show it her. Mm -hmm. and she'll All right. All right. Well, thank you for your time. We appreciate nice. it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is H violation notice, Kenneth Sandberg, 85 William G Drive, Assessor's Map 79, Lot 31. Is there anybody here for that? No. Joe, can you fill us in on the details? Yes, uh, so this is a violation notice issued for what appeared to be tree clearing. Um, the homeowner so I met with the homeowner at the site. Um, there was some machinery that he was using to kind of move around some debris. Um, it seems that, actually I don't, I kind of don't want to speak for him, but it appeared to just be tree clearing within a uh, jurisdictional area or just, you know, cutting off debris or, or something of that nature. It just looked suspect from the street. So, hence I issued the violation notice. I figured we could have a conversation with him about it, just to see you know, what the next steps are. Um, do you have any idea um, of where the tree cutting was taking place um, in relation to wetlands? Yeah, I mean, provide a general idea. I mean, some of it was probably like within 25 feet 25, uh, or 25 to 50. 
is well within the 100 foot oh, yes. buffer zone. Yeah. All, right. All right. Any other questions or comments from the commission? <clears throat> Not hearing any. And we can move on to agenda item I, minor modification, town of Tewksbury, 900 Chandler Street, 900 Chandler Street assessors map 43, lot 84, DP file number 305-1175. There's nobody here for that. Joe, do you have any details? Yep, so this is a minor modification uh, for the removal of existing boardwalks uh, within the Shannon Well Fields. If you recall, this was a project for the installation of new boardwalks within the Shannon Well Field. However, the project didn't account for uh, the removal of existing bridge infrastructure. So there is uh, bridge infrastructure marked on the provided site plans, and the DPW is the one who would be conducting the work. So they would basically just, uh, like using uh, either hand material or hand tools or <coughs> like chains to pull it out. That's how it would be done. There's no like digging within uh, the resource areas. Uh, so they, I believe they outline the procedures on the provided site plan. So I think it would be approved per that uh, those steps listed in the site plan that Evan's currently looking at. So it's just the area in green? Uh, the Bobcat Dry Work Zone? Is that all they're doing? So it's, I believe that area in green. <coughs> that's, so that's where the Bobcat's going to be staged to like the link to some of the debris and pull it out. Uh, but the actual debris that they're pulling off, there should be a call out to like a steel frame bridge or. Uh, yeah, if you see. If you should see on so the southwest of that green, you should say steel frame and old bridge. Yeah, uh, I think this is going to be impossible to finite this project because there's so much stuff in there. It's not quite a dumping, like it's not like somebody was throwing trash in there, but right. there's been so many different let's hobble together Correct. this bridge and then it fell apart, so they did something else. and. Yeah, it's right. I like the idea of just having it removed and let's start fresh. I think it's a great idea. And the hazard trees are the dead trees that are with the red X on them? Within the, where they could fall and hit the yeah, board. Yeah, so they're going to right. remove those so that they, like, no one's threatened by a dead tree while they're working. Yep. And did you say for digging their oh They're not digging in the they're, they're beating it into the ground, if I remember correctly, right? News. Oh, for, uh, the, the, for the posts, yeah, for the posts, handy. right, right. But for like, I know, like right before the bridge starts, there's a tire that's like buried in there. They, you said they'd be pulling them out. There's no digging with bobcats or other large construction vehicles. But is there any hand digging or like you know? Yeah, they yeah, pull some stuff out by hand if they can. All right. All right, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Uh, I like it, yep. Any other <coughs> questions or comments from the commission? Joe, are they leaving the trees in that area? Dead trees, woody debris? Is that the plan? Are they removing them from the site? Too? No, so trees that they cut are going to be left on site. They were gonna, yeah, in I think that was his box yeah. area. I remember the presentation pretty well. He was like, we're gonna let it go back into nature. Mm -hmm. The other trees that they were just cutting and leaving in place where they cut them, aren't they? Yeah, they were basically, yeah, they weren't ones, removing, removing anything to, except uh, for- Like stockpiling them, essentially. Yeah, they were, the only thing they were talking about was um, removing their sawdust and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was wondering, should we do it the same way that the la we agreed to for the whole entire boardwalk where they cut and leave it in place versus stockpile them in a certain area? Whoa. If they leave them in place, it's going to be like in the <coughs> work zone. Like if you were to cut these trees and just, or at least for some of them. Some of them. Yeah. Do you want them to leave them 
where they are? No, we agree to it for the other project. I mean, leave them in place if practical. If it interferes with work, I think it's fine to move them, but I don't know why we agree to one way for most of the project and then change yeah, the so work. Yeah, so we can say it. leave in place unless uh, unless, 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 yeah. unless yeah. Right, yeah. unless not practical. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, I like the good, good call. Of, If that's the case, could I have a motion to approve the minor modification for Town of Tewksbury, 900 Chandler Street, Assessor's Map 43, Lot 84, DP file number 305-1175, as discussed at this meeting? I'll make that motion. Could I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Um, are you two here for the um, violation notice? All right, I'm going to skip the, um, the next few, and I will call violation notice. Michael and Lauren Kippenberger, four, uh, 540 Whipple Road, Assessor's Map 19, Lot 38. Could you please introduce yourselves for the record? Mike Kippenberger, uh, 540 Whipple Road. And Lauren Kippenberger. All right, could you fill us in on the details of this? Apparently we have a violation, um, so we're trying to work through that and trying to make it so that we can um, come to a conclusion. Um, recently, I've removed some sod and some soil um, in the area of my yard to dry it out. I put some crushed stone underneath there and some sand. Um, it's, I get the runoff from both my neighbor's house, both the houses on each side because I'm down below it, mm -hmm. as well as I get the runoff of Whipple Road. Um, I live right across from Farwood. Um, previously, we've had uh, a water main break on the street. Uh, I think it was like right around COVID time. Really saturated my yard tremendously, um, especially that area. And then um, the berm of my driveway had been taken off by a plow with a little bump at the end, which makes the water flow down to the storm drains. Um, that was coming into my driveway as well. Um, so they were working on Whipple Road. They were able to fix the berm for me, um, the, comp the subcon <coughs> subcontractors that are doing the work. Um, and then I was, you know, planning on removing the soil, putting some new loam in, bringing it up to grade a little bit more than it is. There were some existing trenches there that the gentleman who owned the house previous to me had put in mm -hmm. to dump out to the wetlands or the back area. I widened those trenches to get more water flow out of that. And my intent was to put a um, one of those uh, sleeved tubes that they sell at Home Depot or, or Lowe's that keeps the sediment. Um, outside of the tube, but it causes the water to flow out to get it out towards the back. Right. Um, didn't know I was in violation because I um, wasn't really sure where the determined wetlands area was, like for the footage. Mm -hmm. um, I obviously would not have dug anything out mm -hmm. or any, I, believe me, I don't wanna, I wanna follow and do what I need to do to make this right. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of where I'm at. Um, trying to dry it out so we can have a place space. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Kids. Um, or a dryer yard for the kids. I dryer yard, at least, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did also, no, sorry, I just want to, uh, I printed off some, like, historical area uh, imagery right. so you guys could take a look at that. So your intent was to level off, level that it up area. a little bit, and that that soil was so saturated that I was trying to get some kind of spacing in there, whether it was crushed stone or sand, to let the water flow through it. It was like basically I was getting the whole runoff of the everything right down in that area. So I was just trying to build it up a little to see yeah. if I get some drainage. Unfortunately, to, we're the low spot. The two neighbors yeah, are that high. Area the of road ripples. comes yeah. in. We're just kind of in all pools, and after that water main break, it really got worse. It was kind of like. A low, very low spot of the yard, and just mm -hmm. stays wet, and it's unfortunate for the kids to play. I mean, my so going through this, mm -hmm. um, if you had filled out the RDA, like what would this project look like? My only, uh, I wanted to get the opinion of the commission because I've never leveled out a yard or anything. 
my concern is like the 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 crushed stone is gonna you know whenever you get water it's gonna make the not just the water go through but it's gonna you know the water is gonna make all of the soil on top go through and you're just gonna be dumping that soil into, into the wetlands okay. I'm not sure if that's standard practice or if that's I, what would actually happen I had also gotten some some sand as well and I put some sand down as well to kind of shore it up and to dry that area out as well okay. so I don't know if that helps with the drainage um, I was stuff that I've read online said between sand and small crushed stone would help with with any of that stuff yeah. but I could be wrong as well any questions or comments from the Commission before we ask Joe Joe? Yeah, so I just wanted to provide some background. Um, so I was out here actually in August of 2022 for an application of an above ground pool. Uh, at that time, I conservatively called this area near the digging a wetland just because, it, as you can see in the historical aerials, it was wet. Uh, but because they already had that 50 foot setback in place, which makes them exempt. I kind of conservatively just called it a wetland. Um, so after seeing this from the street, I just wanted to get as much information as possible as far as existing conditions. Um, so I got some uh, additional information. So I dug or advanced some augers uh, in the area where the digging was actually occurring. Um, based off that information, it didn't seem like a wetland soil where they were digging. Um, although it is wet um, and it's, it seems to be dominated by just you know long grass, um, there's some wetland vegetation, but it seems like it historically has been an expansion of lawn. Um, nonetheless, it's still within 100 feet of a wetland in the rear, um, so it's still you know a project that needs to be permitted. Per the WPA and our bylaw, um, so it comes down to knowing where the wetland resource areas are and you know what the proposed work is. So, uh, were you able to provide any sketch or plan of like exactly like on a? Uh, now, 24 hours out, I've tried to just kind of talk and, <laughs> yeah. and write what I had here yeah. and just kind of <laughs> talk that way through it. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for getting us on here, by the way. I, I mean, what that. you saw yesterday, we're almost done. We're just, I got, we're I just at topsoil. Yeah, it's <laughs> left to put on it at this point and just let it, you yeah. know, do its thing. But I know soil's tricky, too, so I, I kept all the soil that I had so that I could mix in new topsoil to it in case there was any, yeah. mm -hmm. like, anything like that, just to make sure as well. But if I'd, yeah. So, yeah, you're not looking for, uh, like, your does the commission think we need a full, um, um, like, delineation of everything? It's, it is getting pretty close to the wetlands, but we don't know exactly where those are. Um, but having some sort of plan that shows what your intentions are for this and okay. roughly where the wetlands are would be pretty All helpful right. for us. All right, I know that. Um, Joe had yesterday taken some pictures of the tape measure and the how far were we from that back part? Because I know that we were 56 to from the pool to the area that you delineated as that. But I'm just wondering now that you've moved that back further, does that get me closer to being in compliance with the wetlands? Uh, now that the uh, area is yeah, different, because so. I, I don't. So the delineated yeah. area of wetlands, we, we kind of don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, and I was under the impression that we would. I found out a little more about it, but that's my bad on that. Um, so I think, you know, if I had known it was that area, I wouldn't have pulled it up. Mm -hmm. um, so, so to, to answer your question, yeah. I from our from my site visit, I took a picture of the 25 foot line. Um, so I don't think anything's like within the no disturb zone that's been affected, at least, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly activity between 25 and 100 feet um, so we're talking I mean, the, the, we're the, talking the trench uh yeah mm -hmm. the trenching in the application of top of 
the gravel and the topsoil and stuff. So the reason why I say, mentioned the 25 foot is that's uh, like our no disturb zone that we enforce. So it's good that you at least haven't altered anything in our you know, right. do not disturb zone. Because so. mm -hmm. that's how we would typically, you know, you know, for an RDA, I, I think most often it's like if it's for a lawn, you can get pretty close to it. Right. You know, it doesn't have to, you don't have to be 100% outside right. of a 100-foot right. zone right. or anything sense. like that. That makes sense. Um, so. Um, so would people, would um, we all feel comfortable about an RDA with some sort of plan of what they're trying to do and a rough estimate of where the wetlands are? Mm -hmm. But basically, this is an existing yard. So yep, I took all the grass, yeah. Yeah. Off, <laughs> put it off to the side to dry it out, I mean, and then I tried to put some crushed stone yeah, and the, like it would level along. It's the existing yard, yeah. you can tell. I mean, if you ever yeah, come to our well, yard I mean, and like joke and test, like, just, we can't do anything beyond like right where so you're doing this work because there, yeah. <laughs> you'll see it kind of goes in, you know, forest, and then clearly there's wetlands way back that, <laughs> you know, no kids are playing in. So this was existing yard that just was. just very wet yeah, yeah wet that we're trying to reseed and make playable <laughs> mm -hmm. so i'd recommend just treating it as if this hasn't happened yet but they were coming to us saying hey we propose this project well we, what do we recommend type of thing right mm -hmm. i i, I agree and, and, thank and you basically rubber stamp this and and just put some controls in. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Perfect. I, I, right. I think that that's less painful for everyone. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think that's the so okay. best option. I, so rubber stamp as in? Well, we, we know what's gone on, but yeah. we're, we're going to go through the process, but there's not a whole lot we're going to do here. The process as in an RDA? Or? I think so. Yeah. I, I, I think an RDA and you yeah. just enforce the sediment controls yeah. portion of it. We're not going to change it at this point, and it's yeah. an existing yard. Yeah. So not rubber stamp like submit whatever you want. We're right. No, no, like, no, 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 no. No, we understand. <laughs> that. Yeah. Already, just but we've already yeah. talked it. Yeah. So it's this seems like a reasonable thing reasonable we were trying to do. It's just not permitted. Yes. And we right. just want it to be right. permitted. Okay. That's really. And if we had known, we would have done it. So I mean, we did the bull the right way. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But we just didn't know that it. No, I think I think we just do it by the numbers, and it's here. It is okay. what it is. Thank you. Okay. So, so for the site plan, I were, are, do you, how does the commission feel about, you know, requirements of the site plan? Like, what should that show, like, you know? Yeah, what do you need from us? I, I mean, we're, we're not in the wetlands, mm -hmm. and you're comfortable we're outside of the 25 foot. So just as an existing yard, and we encapsulate it there of what's existing. <coughs> I think it just makes sense. I hate to use common sense, but <laughs> I, I like it. But you know, we don't want to change your yard. We don't want you to incur the cost of having to come bring somebody in. Right. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I'm I'm comfortable with that. How about you guys? I am too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and good news, you're not going to have any water main breaks, hopefully. I hope right. not. Well, yeah, I mean, just went by our house. We, to, we, have, that, so. we have a little bet going on the street. We all throw money in to see what day it's going to hit. I'm just kidding. No, um. no the new ones, I hope it'll be good. Yeah, hopefully Wibble Road will be straight now. Yeah, with that. I, I say work with Joe for uh, doing an RDA, and and you'll visit us one more time. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Awesome. So yeah. RDA, um, okay. is that just the application process to do yeah. anything? Okay. Is that something that can be found on the town website? So it can be now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joe's very proud of that. It's, so it right. still requires some sort of plan, though. No, that, absolutely. That's fine. No, I just want to get, yeah. get it going. Yeah. I'm off this week. But we can start teachers, it on so. our end and then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have a little more flexibility. We, we go back to work on Monday. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. We're, thank you. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hold on. Uh, for like as the site is today, yeah, uh, I would recommend because there's still no sediment controls there, so to prevent like it from continuously discharging, say like tarp up the like the stockpiles that are currently there, oh, okay. or install some sort of sediment 
like silt fence or straw wall just because it is still flowing and it's feeding off of those stockpiles okay. and going right into that wetland area. Okay. So. All right, so a sediment fence. Definitely put that into that. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, the ground's soft because it's so wet, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's try it out with a flag of green. Yeah. Grass seed's coming quick. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. All right. Um, item J, K, and L. We'll take these pretty quick. Emergency certification, Mark Bradley, 71 Heinrich Road, Assessor's Map, 2, Lot 25. Joe, can you fill us in on the details? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 um, so this is a emergency certification issued for a failed septic system Got a failed Title V emergency uh, order was issued by the health department that allowed me to issue the emergency certification. Um, I did so with the following conditions. And I guess if it's possible just to say this once through agenda item J through K since they are all similar. Um, the conditions for the emergency certifications that I issued for those three uh, projects were now, same case, the conditions were, number one, install a silt fence and or straw waddle adjacent to, the adjacent to the area of construction such that erosion of disturbed soil is not deposited within wetland resource areas, uh, in parentheses, the nearby stream for agenda item J. The silt fence and or straw waddle is to be installed prior to beginning construction activities. Uh, number two, coordinate with the conservation agent once the silt fence and or straw waddle is installed and prior to beginning construction activities, the conservation agent shall approve of the silt fence slash straw waddle location and installation. That is all. Done. All right. Um, could I have a... Um, um, yeah. Um, um, <laughs> could I have a motion to ratify the emergency certification for Mark Bradley, 71 um, Heidenrich Road, such as map two, lot 25. I'll make that motion. Go have a second. Second. All those in favor? <clears throat> aye. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Um, agenda item K, emergency certification, Billy Roper, 55 Wyndham Road, assessor's map 97, lot 102. Um, you already mentioned the order of conditions. Anything else to go on? For this one, the other additional information. Um, <coughs> trying to pull it up. No, not for this one. Right. Um, but as discussed at the last agenda item, correct. Typical emergency certification. If that's the case. Could I have a motion to ratify the emergency certification for Billy Roper, 55 Wyndham Road, Assessor's Map, 97, Lot 102? I'll make that motion. Could I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. Agenda item L, emergency certification, Billy Roper, 64 Waldo Road, Assessor's Map 106, Lot 25. And seeing the name, are these at all connected besides the person submitting the emergency certification? Uh, same conditions would apply for the uh, yeah, other two. But they're not, um, they're totally different locations. It's not like they're, Correct. Okay. Um, all right, any other questions or comments from the commission? Um, as mentioned earlier, these order of conditions uh, were specified in agenda item J. Could I have a motion to ratify the emergency certification for Billy Roper, 64 Waldo Road, Assessor's Map 106, Lot 25? I'll make that motion. Could I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. All right. And now agenda item M, Community Preservation Committee. Um, I'll volunteer for that. You will? All right. Yep. Just, just appoint me and we'll get it over with. Yep. Um, could I have a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye as well. All right. Um, do we, have, do we have minutes 
Um, not that I know piling of. Up. They're kind of piling yeah, up. Just, there's a lot of dates um, there. Yep. Busy Friday, Joe. <laughs> I don't do the minutes. <laughs> oh, come on, come in on Saturday. You can, uh, can do them all. Um, just curious, who does the minutes? Uh, I believe her name's Melissa. It's someone who's not in the building who does it. Okay. Um, I, I, agenda item H, I think we mentioned it, I discussed it. Did we want to, uh, like... I mean, it would be good for him to come in to have a conversation. Yeah. Or just, I mean, he's got an excavator there pulling out trees. I mean, that's not casual tree clearing. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's okay. a good way to put it. <laughs> uh, I'm just, you know. All right. Yeah, so, so. Is that worth like postponing, or do you want to like tell me to like tell him to get an RDA or something like that? Do you want to have that conversation first? I would start him going down the RDA path right now. I mean, I think most, pretty much all violations, unless they're unique, should file an RDA regardless. Okay. I'll say file an RDA unless you strongly oppose it. Please attend that. Sounds great. Yeah, if if he's filing it, if he just decides to file an RDA, then you know if that's not ready by the next meeting, then of course it doesn't have to come for the violation notice. But we can just throw it on whenever he does apply, if that's what he chooses to do. <coughs> Old business, new business, admin reports. I like the adjournment. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here for a while. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> nothing. Uh, if that's the case, next meeting is May 10th. Uh, could I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Could I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye as well.